motors, there's kind of some specific needs. So we need we need a lot of power. We need a in a fairly light weight, and we need them to be dependable under hard impacts and whatnot. So it's a kind of a unique environment and that we want the performance of very large heavy motors and we need them to be very light and not heavy in order to work. So it limits the choices. So this is this is a short mag motor, okay? And mag motor is one of the motors that we use frequently for combat. So this was a motor that I used for the drive setup on Tombstone. Okay. So um, these are a solid brushed style motor and I've been happy with their performance but there are more powerful options out there and so all of the rage now is to go towards brushless motors okay. so if you look at these two motors side by side uh, this would look like this is a much more powerful motor than this one and the simple truth is in wattage output this one has significantly more power than this one. Uh, the problem for brushless motors has always been trying to get the control setups to work for what we need for combat. So I haven't used, I've used brushless in smaller robots and been happy with their performance. I haven't used them in the larger robots yet and so we're going to do this for robo games for mortician. I'm gonna play around with some brushless options and this is part of that journey to get there. So I've been using this motor with the Waiachi gearbox. Now, the, this particular one is a 16 to 1 reduction, which turns out to be the right reduction to get a good drive speed out of it. And I like, I like what they've done here. The Waiachi makes great products. They're, they're all fantastic. They're specific for our needs in combat robotics and the fact that they're very strong, but they're also very lightweight. And they've got large mounting arrangements so they don't break. It's a, it's a solid product for our weird little, little usage. Um, the problem is that this is made specifically to use this motor. So the, the mount plate is set up to mount to this motor. The gear, the input gear that goes into the gearbox matches this output shaft. And virtually all of the brushless stuff that's out there is in a metric configuration as opposed to the mag motor and the watch gearbox in a SE inch configuration. So I need to find a way, I need to you know, design a way to mount something to this gearbox that used that motor. And so that's where we've been busy over the last a couple of weeks trying to figure out a way to make this happen. So here's the here's the plate that's designed to mount to the mag motor. Here's what I ended up designing. Okay. So I needed something that the this motor could bolt to, but would still bolt to the Wyatchi gearbox. And so uh, this was not fun to machine, but when I'm all said and done, I kind of like what I've done here. And one of the one of the, the things I get out of that is, all right, this motor, which is about three and a half horsepower, is three pounds fourteen point two ounces. Okay, this motor which is about four and a half horsepower, is one pound, 11 ounces, okay? So not only is it more powerful, it's quite a bit lighter. The other thing that's really cool about it is if you look at how they mount up, this one is about two inches longer than this one, which means I can make the whole robot about four inches narrower, because each drive section is going to be about two inches shorter than it would have been running, you know, this way. So not only can I lose weight, which is really important in a combat robot, I can gain power, which is really important in a combat robot, but I can compact the whole frame arrangement, which helps the physical structure and strength of how everything is working.
So these are the parts that I did. Let's throw one together and see what it looks like. So this mount plate is designed to basically cradle this motor all the way around. So it's just got these tiny little screws that hold it in place. There's a lot of them, which is cool, but if all you're doing is relying on this four millimeter hardware to hold this in place, those bolts can strip out of this is this part's aluminum, or they can shear off. So part of the design on this was to not only give it somewhere to bolt to, but to physically grab it around the outside of that so that it's it's held in place sturdier. And you can't you can't grab back here because this this is an outrunner style motor so the outside of the motor rotates so the only place you have to grab is just that little part on the front so you have to make sure you grab that really well in order to keep this from falling apart so hopefully this all works really well we'll see gearbox is set up for a half inch output shaft like the mag motor has. And the problem is this is a 10 millimeter output shaft so it's you know significantly smaller than that. There's no way to, to use the gear that comes with it. So I'm gonna have to make something custom in order to do this. So I found gear that's the right size to made up with the gearbox this works with a 3 8 inch shaft okay so what I had to do was bore the 3 8 inch shaft out to 10 millimeter so ever so slightly bigger and then I had to broach it for a keyway so that I could make all of this work with the 10 millimeter shaft that comes out of this motor so this actually turned into probably one of the more difficult machining aspects of this. Because if you look, you can see they stamp the part number into this, which means you can't grab this in a lathe like you would normally do to, to, to machine it because it's, it's not circular anymore because they stamped it and so now it's hard to grab. So you actually have to grab it on the gears and do it on the mill. So. I messed one up before I got, got, got these right, so now we're, now we're good. So you can see the, the amount of um, stick out that I have here, and so that's just enough now to grab that gear correctly. And the little, the little hub of this will actually be down inside of, the, of that when I assemble it so that this sticks out just the right amount to match up with the gears and everything should work. Just fine. So you know, we got this little little washer here to keep the gear from chewing into the aluminum housing. And put it all together, and we should be good to go. So here's the motor assembled on the plate. Uh, got the gear in place. So I'm going to measure the gear height to make sure that we've got enough clearance inside the gearbox. So as it sits right now, we've got 400 and. 82 thousandths. Okay. And here we're going to measure this down to the base. We've got 631 thousandths minus 130 for the weight. So right at 500 thousandths. So we've got 15, 18 thousandths of clearance. Everything should bolt together okay. So let's, uh, let's bolt it up and see what we got. Okay. 
lifts up fine, doesn't bind. So, I think this will be good. take it all back apart because I still need to <laughs> drill and tap the mount holes right here to match up like the plate that was in here originally. So I need some mount holes right there. Um, but as far as the machining for mounting the motor in place, everything looks like it's really good. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to have Drive weapon assembly. It's going to let's get those wires up. Here. Seven pounds, eight point two ounces, as opposed to nine pounds, three point nine ounces. So I save a lot of weight. I have more power, and in a smaller physical package. We're going to have a lot of videos on the rebuild for Mortician and the things we're going to do along the way. So you keep an eye on the channel. Uh, we've got some, uh, some cool things we're going to try, we're going to do. And obviously if you like any of these videos, like and subscribe and uh, leave any comments below. We'd love to hear from you.